We've got a really eclectic show for you today. We're going to be talking with some folks from the zoo, and they're going to bring some of their guests who stay at the zoo. And you're going to like them because they are kind of beautiful and wonderful and strange and evocative. And they don't speak English, except one of them actually says a few words. And then we're going to talk to somebody from Planned Parenthood. <laughs> different, totally, totally different. So stay tuned for Livewire right after. Places is the Sacramento Zoo, and with me in the studio is Brooke Cole, and she has in her hand Huli, uh, no, uh, Panat Pantanal. Pantanal, yes. Pantanal. Why is it uh, Pantanal? That is actually an area in Brazil where she would oh. be found. It's a oh. nature preserve down in Brazil, oh. and she is a Brazilian rainbow boa. Ooh. Yes, if you look in the light, you can actually see. Her, her yes, you can. Some iridescent color on her scales. Oh yes, and look that's at that. Where she so gets like somebody name. kind of like art, an art uh, uh, drew that. Said, "What oh, do you think, God?" Uh, it's a little expressionistic, but okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> but it's actually part of her camouflage. So she lives down on the ground, and oh. she can also climb in trees. Uh -huh. But she lives in an area that's really wet. So by mm. having that iridescent color on her scales, it actually helps her blend in with a lot of the water that she would be near on the ground. I see it. I see it all. And um, does she eat people? She does not eat people. Generally, the rule for snakes is that they can only eat anything that is as big as their biggest part. So her mm. widest part here in the middle, if it fits there, it will fit in her mouth. And she generally won't eat anything that's much bigger than that. So okay. you're a little bit too big for her. Okay. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I, you know, <clears throat> I just wanted to ask that question. Because, just in case. Yeah, just you in case. You want to be prepared. Hi, I'll be <laughs> speaking to you from inside a snake. <laughs> really cool. And uh, this other guy up here who looks so wonderful. That is Julio, and hey. Julio is a blue and yellow macaw, and they are also found down in South America. So I brought two South American species well, today. Good. That's good. I like it, and he looks expectant. He, he is expectant. Expect Julio loves seeds, and he sees this little pile of seeds and nuts that I have down here, uh -huh. and he says, I would love to say something for you if you'll give me that nice almond. Would you say something for us? We'll see if he wants to. Okay. Julio, can you say hi? hi. Good job. Hi. Did you well, hi yourself. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Julio. Oh. Julio. Julio. Okay. He says it very fast. Julio. And he can also show off his nice big wings. Now out in the wild, wow. he would use those great big wings to fly around from tree to tree. They're a really social species of birds, mm -hmm. so they live in flocks and they migrate with their flocks to different areas to find food and find mm -hmm. shelter. So those great big wings are perfect for that. And before the show you said that Julio was 27 years old. He is 27 years old and he's lived at the Sacramento Zoo for almost his entire life. He was mm -hmm. born and raised in human care. Uh, so he's always been around people. So that's why he's learned how to say English words. Mm -hmm. Living down in South America, he wouldn't be speaking English. If Pero, anything, he'd be speaking Spanish. Oh. Pero como no. <laughs> but como se dice in bird? Bird. What is, uh, what is bird in Spanish? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably a Latin derivative. <laughs> <Probably. Avian. laughs> but they use that behavior to mimic the calls of other animals out in the wild. So he has the same vocal cord, cord structure that we do, and he can make a lot of the same sounds that we can but he can also make a lot of the same sounds of other animals. Oh. So he could make maybe the call of a hawk or an eagle. Mm -hmm. So when they fly by, he mimics their call and they think, ah, there's just another eagle in that tree. I don't need to go check it out. So he fools those predators into thinking that he's something else. That's good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Very smart. You live more, 27 more years. Oh, he has many more years to go. Uh, parrots, especially in human care, can actually live to be up to about <laughs> 50 or 60 Why years. Why is it, he sticks out his tongue and then kind of like, so, snakes use their tongue to smell. They have an organ in the roof of their mouth. Wait a minute, they use their tongue to smell? To smell, yes. Did you get this, folks? <laughs> they use their tongues to smell. They these, absolutely these do. And you can see her sticking out her tongue, just checking everything out. Checking it all out. And his eyes are like these, these globes of black. Mm -hmm. Now, Wait, do you think that you could win a staring contest? I'm being hypnotized. <laughs> Help me. 
So snakes don't oh. have any eyelids. So they actually can never close their eyes. Oh. They have no eyelids, so you would so never win a staring when they contest. Sleep? Don't they send something over there? No, actually, they just sleep with their eyes open. Their eyes are always open. They have a clear scale that goes over their eyes to protect them from dirt and debris, mm -hmm. but they never close their eyes. Well, he looks pretty clean, though. He must take a shower every day. She, she does not take a shower. She does have a water bowl in her dish, so if she needs water to drink or to uh, just kind of cool off, she can go in there. But they shed their scales every so often, uh -huh. and she gets this really pretty color afterwards. Wow. So these are the kinds of things you can see at the beautiful Sacramento Zoo. But we were here to talk about some programs. Yes. And, but also, this is like part of that, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. The first program, and I have it on my little cheat sheet here, is, is Nature Explorers. Definitely. Nature Explorers is a program that we do the last Saturday of every month. And it's a way for people of all ages to really connect with nature in a fun, exploratory way. So you can really get in there and get your hands dirty and kind of you know, stimulate all of your senses with things that we find in nature. It's really fun. Like these, these, this animal. Like these animals. And these animals are out on grounds. Uh, we have about 30, 35 different education animals that are used to being around people. And they come out for close encounters like this. So families can come up and touch the rainbow boa and see what she feels like and really create a connection with the animals that you see at the zoo. That's quite wonderful. I like it very much. And so... <clears throat> And this is uh, this is a program that uh, goes throughout the year. It does. It's almost all throughout the year. We stop in the really colder, wet months, um, but most every month of the year, the last Saturday of the month, we are um, having a Nature Explorers program, and it's uh, free for oh. free with admission. Free so with admission. So there's no extra charge as long as you are in the zoo. You get to participate in, in Nature Explorers. So you can't, but you have to sign up in advance, right? You do not. Nope. You can just come on that last Saturday of the month and join us. Wow, mm -hmm. that's very, very Californian of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, and you guys will be around at that time? You'll be able to talk? Yeah, these talk animals will be around at the time. They're not officially part of Nature Explorers, oh, okay. but they are oftentimes out visiting with out guests. Visit, so you could actually visit Julio in his natural habitat yes. in the zoo? Yeah, he comes out with our <laughs> our staff to do animal encounters, so you can get up close with Julio. Just to check you out and see whether or not you're doing well. Oh, what? You brought something here. What is this? You brought some kind of film? Yes. Oh, yeah. let's have a look. Okay. Sack Zoo. So I'm talking with Tanya Candelaria. You know, Candelaria. Candelaria mm -hmm. with the Sacramento Zoo. And one of the things I wanted to talk about was the Nature Explorers program. Yes, so we've got this really great, great program called Nature Explorers. And that's an open play environment here at the Sacramento Zoo. It's included when you just come to the zoo. And it's to get kids active and engaged in nature. So they can make leaf art. They can learn how bugs grow their different, you know, their legs and wings and all of that. And really get out and play. We do story time as well. A lot of different crafts and all those crafts involve things like mud and sticks and those fun things you don't always get to play with. Right. What's the average age? Uh, say probably about five, yeah. but it's good for anywhere from two all the way up to ten or so. We've got magnifying glasses. We can really craft it towards whatever age group shows up. And then do they actually get to go around the zoo as well, or is it just more just a smaller So they trail? can explore the zoo as they want and then come over and play with us over here in uh, Nature Explorers, go explore the zoo, and then come back if they want. It's an open environment where you can come and go as you would like. So one of the things that you're pretty proud of is that this is actually this program, Nature Explorers, has been a little bit helped by Disney. Yeah, so did we reached out to Disney. They have a grant we applied for it and we received and that's what's really helped us make this program possible. Helped us get all the tools in place to offer this to the general public along with their general day at the zoo. So a great educational aspect mm -hmm. in the Sacramento Zoo and that's for the younger, right? Yes. But you also have another program educational and it's called tea and tours yeah tea and tours so it's our senior program 55 and older you register for this program and then you get to come out to the zoo we have a docent led tour and then you end the day with tea and cookies and how's the participation in that that's really good participation uh, the public really seems to enjoy it and love it we gear it specifically towards the, the seniors and what they really want to know and the things that they're interested in I would imagine that when you do a tea and tours that the questions that come up from the seniors are probably all over the board oh definitely some of them haven't been to a zoo in several years and so this zoo is very different for them some of them have traveled to Africa and these other lands so you really get this wide variety of stories and questions coming in and you guys promote this via your website yes we have it on our website. If you go to saxu.org, you can learn all about how to sign up and more information about it. That sounds great. Yeah. Thanks you so much. Thank you.
there's the zoo. I've been there. That's quite a wonderful place. It is a really wonderful place. And I wanted place. to say something about the zoo before we go on to the next program. Uh, you know, I really do like uh, shopping in the zoo uh, store because there's some odd and wonderful things you can't buy at Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, that's definitely true. We have such a wide variety of different things you can buy, and the staff there does an amazing job getting all kinds of things from all around the world. So yes. we have, we even have sustainably, uh, you know, locally sourced things, and we have sustainably sourced things. We even have fair trade items that are coming from all over the world. So you're actually, by purchasing those items at the zoo's gift shop, we are supporting communities and individuals from all throughout the globe. Thank you. And you see the, the what we just put up there was uh, what, uh, if you wanted to get onto the Nature Explorer thing, you, all you have to do is remember last, last Saturday of the month, right? Yep, last Saturday of the month. You don't have to sign up beforehand. <laughs> but the other program has much more draw for people like uh, me because I happen to like to drink tea. Absolutely, yes. Our tea and tourist program is for ages 55 and older, and that is a program that you do have to register beforehand only because there are limited spots. And you can do that on our website at saxzoo.org. And we have our first one coming up in May. Well, Brooke Co., thank you so much for coming to You're see You're welcome. Me yeah, and, thank you for having and us. And bringing all these wonderful friends of yours, especially... Pantanal, right? No, Your I favorite? like them all. Your Pantanal. Yeah. Pantanal. I, I've He's never... Can I right? hold him? Yes. Okay, here we go. Gently. Okay, we're going to take a break now <laughs> while I run away. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing very well. Thank you very much. You take it back. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, you know, what's happening here is a live thing. Sheldon and Folsom, we're going to go actually live to uh, Sheldon and Folsom right now and talk to Will James and Lauren Goodman. Is that what we're going to do? There they are. Well, hello, Ray, and greetings to all the folks in the studio there for Livewire and those watching. Nice of you to join us out here. We're on the edge, the southern edge of Sacramento County, bordering Elk Grove. I'm Will James with Lauren Goodman, and we have something extra special, Ray. This is our third week in a row of highlighting Game of the Week, and this one is even more supreme than the rest. We're at Sheldon High, where tonight, in one of two boys' Division I semifinal battles, the Sheldon Huskies, seated number one in the Sac Joaquin section, will square off with longtime arch rival Number four seed, Folsom. And Lauren, it's going to be a war. Tonight's a matchup of power in every explanation of the word. You're going to see it high flying up and down the court in speed and intensity. It's going to be a show that you want to definitely be sitting around to watch. Moreover, these have been long standing programs of extreme excellence and their head coaches Mike Wall of Folsom and Joy Rawlings of number one Sheldon among the elite of all basketball coaches in this entire area in Northern California for the past decade plus. We're expecting standing room only, a thrill a minute as Lauren said and I'll tell you there's going to be some as she said high flying supernatural acrobatic moves and they will be plentiful. These two are the matchup that we all wanted to see. The Sheldon Huskies versus the Folsom Bulldogs, and they are waiting for each other. These two coaches know each other very well. The two teams know each other very well, and there's a long history of winning around these two programs. Well, fans that want to see this game are going to have to get here lickety split ASAP. And as you see here, this is my highly regarded Highly publicized personal score sheet for tonight's game. Yes, Folsom taking on Sheldon. But ah, underneath, I have something else that I need to read because it's in the form of a special presentation. For her distinguished service as basketball analyst for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week, a special blue ribbon committee comprised of media professionals has unanimously voted Lauren Goodman as the 2018 Rookie TV Sports Announcer of the Year. And here's the citation to prove it. Congratulations, young lady. Thank you so much, Will. I am so ecstatic, and I cannot wait to do this game tonight. It's going to be a doozy. Well, it comes at another high mark because this, again, is our 20th year 
observing the hometown sports game of the week. There's the frosting on top of the cake commemorating our 20th anniversary. It's been a stone groove and a pleasure. We're at Sheldon High for top flight basketball on the hometown sports game of the week. Take care, Ray. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're back with Patsy, Patsy Montgomery, who's for with Planned Parenthood. Yes. Uh -huh. And interesting, um, your title, I was just, look, we, oh, can we talk about long, that, yeah. please? It, it's actually Vice President of Legislative Campaigns. So you work on the politics of... I look on policy. Policy. Public policy, right. Policy. So we look at the local, state, and national levels. Yes. To look at what's happening, you know, our... our are governments at the local, state, and national level, are they adhering to constitutional rights mm -hmm. for women and families and communities? You know, a number of years ago, about four or five years ago, there was a community at, at the far end of the Central Valley in Bakersfield mm -hmm. who wanted to pass an amendment that would ban the use of birth control in their city. So we get involved in that and say, no, that's unconstitutional at a state level, it's unconstitutional at a federal level. So we, we look at those things. We also get involved in local issues that relate to water and clean water, clean air, because our mission statement ends with every family, a healthy family. We want to ensure that. Yeah, that's so, somewhere in the Constitution. But, uh, and then we also face people who kind of want to unwrite that from the Constitution. Is that possible? Well, unwrite women's access to reproductive health care, yes. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. to, to making decisions and choices of their own. But, we spend a, a lot of time looking at a, a variety of issues to making mm -hmm. sure that, um, for instance, I, I remember working on legislation to ban handcuffing women to their jail beds, to beds when they're giving birth. If you're a prisoner, that's horrible. So it's, a, it's a horrible way to bring a child into the room. Absolutely. Like, are, are you really going to leave <laughs> in the middle of labor? How about a little so, degradation? Yeah. Do you like that? <laughs> so we, we stand up for women, for families. Uh, we do a lot of work right now related to new immigrants mm -hmm. and protecting dreamers. Pretty so, good. Uh -huh. Absolutely yeah. good thing to do. All yeah. of that is amazing stuff. Absolutely. And, and luckily in California, there aren't people marching in front of, or mm -hmm. are there? Well, no. In, in California, we do have people who would like to see Planned Parenthood go away, um, but they're few mm -hmm. and far between. Uh, the vast majority of people in California and around the United States support the work we do. Uh, even people who oppose abortion oftentimes support Planned Parenthood yes. because they realize we're doing more to reduce the need for abortion than just about anyone else. Oh, yeah. Good. So um, uh, you have programs, and we should just kind of uh -huh. go through a real um, kind of cross uh, Cross picture of the uh -huh. program programming. Right. Um, besides you, of these big issues, you know mm -hmm. that uh, we face, you also do other programs which are. Um, well, we provide medical services, just yeah. like most health clinics, uh -huh. and we provide everything from uh, women's routine health care, so annual Pap smears, accessing uh -huh. birth control and the birth control that fits the woman mm -hmm. and the best for her. Mm -hmm. um, we provide access to all forms of birth control. Uh, we provide um, the pap smears, annual breast exams, mm -hmm. to make sure there's no lump. In, in fact, um, a few years ago, uh, Senator Barbara Boxer was talking to defend Planned Parenthood on mm -hmm. the Senate floor, and she showed a picture of a woman who was a patient of ours here in <laughs> Sacramento, cool. and who, who credits Planned Parenthood with saving her life and discovering breast cancer, following up with her, making sure that she got the care she needed, and, and would talk about that. And wow. that's why we have such loyalty by people, because when they needed care, we were there for them. So mm, you do have a website, and so we'd probably uh -huh. be able to go to the website, and right. then if I were, you know, web savvy, I could uh -huh. just jump over there and have a look at the programs. Right, and you could, you could even make an appointment online. You could. Yes, uh-huh. You're not very far from here in Midtown. We have four health centers in Sacramento County, three um, we have uh, one on B Street on 29th and mm -hmm. NB. We have one at Capitol Plaza across from the Capitol. Uh, we have one at Fruit Ridge. And then in, in Sacramento County, we have one in North Highlands. So, so you uh, have uh, brought a video. Let's have a look at that. Okay. What is it? What is it? Why don't you be Well, it's just an introduction to who Planned Parenthood Marmonte is and what okay. that means. So, okay. And it was done recently. So. All right. Well, let's mm -hmm. have a look at this video okay. that you brought, and we'll get a good sense of 
a little bit more about what is Planned uh -huh. Parenthood, okay? Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, uh, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Marmonte is the largest Planned Parenthood affiliate in the United States with 35 health centers covering mid-California through northern Nevada. Our name refers to our geographic service area from the sea to the mountains. From Silicon Valley to Monterey. From the East Bay to Stockton. From Modesto to Bakersfield. From Sacramento to Reno. We provide services to our patients throughout their lives in the communities where they live and work. We're here for them at every stage to help them through their personal journeys. All of our health centers offer birth control, well woman exams, breast and cervical cancer screenings, STI testing and treatment, PEP, PrEP and HIV testing, and abortion services. One third of our health centers offer comprehensive primary care services from newborns to geriatrics. And most people don't know that we offer men's and teen health prenatal care, counseling services, and transgender services. Marmonte is one of the largest providers of sex education in the country. Our educators teach curriculum in schools and communities that relate to people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and cultural backgrounds. We also have programs that support pregnant and parenting teens, and we partner with other safety net organizations to educate groups such as homeless individuals, teens in foster care, and incarcerated youth. Marmonte also stands side by side with community groups both in California and Nevada to advocate for issues that affect our patients' lives, like access to affordable care, prevention of domestic violence, immigrants' rights, monitoring environmental toxins, and fighting for social justice. Marmonte is resilience and empathy, quality health care, non-judgmental, compassionate, a safe haven, a trusted community resource. They are my health home. vision of, of the area that you serve, it kind of goes uh -huh. up a three, about a three state area, right? Right, we cover 29 counties of California and 13 of Northern Nevada, so two states. Mm -hmm. so, two states. Right. Okay, well that's amazing yeah. stuff. So this particular region here we serve, uh, where we have health centers in four counties, but we have, we serve people from 11 counties who come to our, mm -hmm. our various sites. Wow, that's yeah. very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and, and how do you get support? Let's talk a little bit mm -hmm. about the, you know, we talked about the car itself right. and uh -huh. what it's carrying. Yeah. But we're gonna talk about the gasoline. The right, the, well, we, we bill for services just mm -hmm. like you would at, at, at a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. We um, primarily will bill because our, our, our patients are low, 73% of our patients in Sacramento County live at 100% of the federal poverty level or below. That means they don't make more than $11,900 a year yeah. gross income. And so they need help. So they come to us, we provide them with health care, and then we bill the government, it could be the state government or the federal government, for the services we provide. And we um, are a good value for mm -hmm. the, the money. So we don't get money in advance. Mm -hmm. We bill for the actual services we provide. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So it's um, so we'll bill. We also get donations and our patients. What's touching to us is that our patients who are um, some of the, the poorest in the communities will often give a significant portion of of their income to support us as a donation. Amazing. So we'll say you know your your um, bill was you know worth or the, today's, the services we provide were worth about $200, um, whatever you can provide, and they may give us five or $10. That's a lot, that's a meal for the day maybe for their family. Mm -hmm. So we have that, we also have big donors, and we have people with deep pockets who support us and foundations who support us, and so we're very grateful to, to all of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a, an amazing service to the community, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been under fire uh, for a while, but I think that you, um, you have great support, at least in California, at least in this area. Well, in California, we're, we're very lucky, and in Nevada as well. People would be surprised that in Nevada, um, it's a very uh, libertarian state, but it's a state that really values the work that we do mm -hmm. and, and supports us. So we're, 
we're very pleased with being able to provide services in both California and Nevada. We um, have, in, in this particular area, we also, you know, wanna, I wanna make sure we mention that we provide services to families. Mm -hmm. We provide services for transgender individuals. That's good. To the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about when they come in explaining we know who they are because they're our patient. We, you know, and so a, a lot of individuals who are transgender will say, I appreciate not having to explain or see the looks that go around that they may get in other healthcare providers that don't specialize in, in serving so that population. Plant Parenthood doesn't necessarily deal with procreation all along. No, we, we work with, with men, health. sexually transmitted disease, testing and treatment, vaccines, sports physicals for your kids. We provide care for uh, entire families. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patsy, thanks so much for coming oh, to talk to pleasure. me about uh -huh. this. Now, you want to learn more about this uh, Planned Parenthood. Uh -huh. You can go right on the website. Right. Just Google Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. and it'll pop up on your server. And, and look, and, and usually now servers are pretty smart, and mm. it'll show you the closest Planned Parenthoods to you. Right. And people can make appointments online. They can call. And, and make appointments, but they can, um, they don't necessarily have to wait. They can look to see what's the closest appointment to them um, based okay. upon maybe where they work or where they live. And, and so um, if they have um, some form of, I, I have 30 seconds, but mm -hmm. I just got the thought came to my mind. Uh, if they have some form of f um, medical support, mm -hmm. um, and would they just, just to hold on to that, or could they come to you and see what? what no, well, then we can determine whether or not their health insurance would co cover. We'll cover, yeah, we'll cover that. Yeah, so cover any we of work it, with them. Any yeah. of it, so you yeah. can you can learn about that. So it's a way of expanding the possibility if you really are uh, uh, you know hand to mouth with with uh, money. Right. Uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, you you should explore all of the possibilities that. Um, you might be able to have support right. subsidized. And on our website too, they can learn how they can get involved with volunteering, donating, um, the whole breadth of, of the work that we do. So we okay. do a lot of activism. Um, if you uh, want to get involved in supporting social issues like yes. new immigrants, yep. uh, get involved with Planned Parenthood or women's health and protecting women's health. Sign up and volunteer. <laughs> I can't. Thank you so much for Thank coming. Thank you I so much. Uh -huh. I appreciate All it. Right. All right, Patsy. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll be back next week with another show, another wonderful uh, show in, with interviews of people who work in the social services in, uh, in our town and also in the arts and, and also in the fun places like the Sacramento Zoo. So stay tuned for Livewire next week, <laughs> 5 p.m. Thank <laughs> you.